Hello, Zero K fans. This is Show 333 with the April 2v2 tournament. And sorry about the long wait. It took a little while for people to get in, but we are now going to be starting loading up the first match. But before we get to that, let's show the bracket. So we have Yelik Stutzenskazi versus Lufhoft and Eikens. That's going on right now. Killer versus Ralhop versus and Go versus, sorry, Killer and Ralhop versus Google Frog and Aquadim. Which is also going to be going on, I believe, right now. Snuggle Base and Hokomoko versus Google and Sanic is not on yet. They, I think Google is in. Google is not in yet. Everyone else is here of that match, as far as actually, you know. Never mind. Hokomoko is the only one there for that match. This is a little odd. And Arcade and Arcade Nerfilas versus Golda and Drone, which is what we're going to be watching right as soon as it loads. Eventually, it'll load. Okay. So that is the match we're going to be looking at today. Well, what's it going to look at today? That's the first match. The first match is going to be Golda and Drone versus Anarchid and Orphilius. Players are just now setting up, so let's change to that. All right. So we have. So this is Desert Mountain. This is a map that hasn't been played too often. Go over it first. It's pretty big map. It's good for teams. I tried playing it 1v1 once, and it's a bit big for 1v1. It works okay, but there's a lot of easily protected metal, so it's a little awkward. You tend to just get... You get some people getting in the center, but for the most part, you don't really have to. It's just a large, open, awkwardly defended area. So both players are going to be, on each team, they're all going to be trying to probably go for splitting in half. And then we'll see probably more of an attack along the northeast. It's a bit flatter, so it's easier to attack. As well as approaches to the center, there's a geo plant and the metal extractors. The southwest side of the map is, at least in my limited experience, less popular, probably because it's a bit harder to get up to, but it is there. So people can go there if they'd like. And Anarchid and Orphelius do have a plan at first. Anarchid going for Amphib and Orphelius going for gunships. Are we going to see a scallop drop? I think we're going to see a scallop drop. And yes, we are. Orphelius and Anarchid going for a scallop drop. Well, Drone and... Well, Golda hasn't done anything yet. Drone going for a spider factory, going for fleas. They will scout that scallop drop. Golda is surprisingly not building a factory. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but... Apparently that is how they're going to be playing right now. So we have the Valkyries, we have first Scallop coming out. Valkyries coming out considerably faster than the Valkyries. Sorry, Valkyries coming out considerably faster than the Scallops. Scallops, one is out, second one soon to come, but the, it will be scouted. These fleas are just about to get there, and that actually I should have line of sight view on, so I know when it'll be scouted. And it is right now, Gold and Drone spot that that's what's going to happen. And they'll need to respond to that very quickly. One of the fleas trying to harass, but really that's that's not the important thing. The important thing is they have seen what's happening. They will start building tarantulas. They will start building... Okay, there's a factory. Swifts. They'll start building swifts. And that is probably going to get shot down. However, at this point, we we haven't yet seen it happen yet. I mean, the Valkyries are up. Two scallops are up. At the very least, there's going to be a lot of decoy Valkyries, but at this point, that's what they're going to need. There's... This is going to be tricky. There'll be Swifts up pretty... There's already a couple Swifts as it at is. There's two Swifts already. There are no Tarantulas. There are actually no anti-ground forces from Drone, relying entirely on Lotuses, but I think that won't be a bad thing. Especially given that Anarchid and Orphelius are actually waiting a little while, getting another scallop. Are they going to try to get all five scallops? I hope they don't. They really should just go for the decoys. I don't think they have time to try to build up the rest. And they're not even attacking. What are they waiting for? The longer they wait, the harder this will be to get in. As it is, they're going to lose all their transports on approach. The decoy transports are basically just going to be there to help out. And yes, there are decoy transports. The transport attack is coming in and the Swift's... Cannot stop it in time. Valkyrie's moving too quickly for them. And no, they're not. Scallops unloading in the middle of the map to try to get rid of the Swifts. This is... Well, it works, I suppose. A little bit odd, but it does... 
at least mean the scallops are out of there. However, they can't attack from here. They can't get in. There's a venom coming in. A second venom is being built. Sorry, that's a weaver. But there is a venom up. The Swiss and Hawks are up, and the scallops can't really deal with them. So right now, that is a really bad position for Anarchid and Orphelius. No surprises there, but yes, this is a really bad position. But at the same time, they do have the center. They can at least take this. So they didn't they didn't destroy the base of Golda and Drone, but they did take the center territory, and that should be easy enough to hold at this point. I mean, right now, neither Golda nor Drone have really a whole lot of anti-ground forces. Golda not going for any bombers. Drone going for some venom. Well, going for a venom. Continuing to just build up and not worrying about the center at all. So right now, Ophelius is basically powerless. Having gone for gunships early on without really a whole lot they can use. I mean, they have the hawk. Well, they have the hawks to worry about. That's the biggest thing. Anarchy, on the other hand, they are. They've switched up. They've gone for typical play, getting some ducks out, which is actually a really bad idea against Spiderbot Factory. Against the okay. Against the fleas, it's a bad idea. Against the venoms, it would probably work okay, but against the fleas, I don't see that working especially well. Ducks are unfortunately rather weak to fleas just due to the speed. I mean, fleas are still very weak, but yes, it's unlike glaives. Glaives are like riots against fleas, but ducks, with those slow moving missiles, those slow moving, slow firing missiles, it does not work quite as well. And we have Golda with bombers, so Golda can now attack the ground, and I think at this point, it's just going to turn around and Anarchid. And Orphelius are... Well, they're not that far behind. They have the center pretty much taken. Taking the metal extractors there yet. Not sure why. Anarchid really should do that. But Drone and Golda, they have their territory. They have... They have a decent enough army. The scallops in the center are being pulled down in order to help out attacking along the south ridge. And Drone's commander moving back. A little bit of territory being ceded to Anarchid and Orphelius. The northeast continues to be completely open. No one's taking that at all. I was a bit wrong in my initial assessment. Drone has taken the southwest, though. And Anarchid and Orphelius, they could take this. Orphelius has their commander moving forward. Not hurrying to take this northeast expansion. I don't think they're aware that it's really that open. They should be, though. I think, yeah, they have radar. They know that it's fairly open. But they haven't gone to take it yet. At the same time, the southwest is falling to an extent. Though it's still kind of up in the air. Drone has the, the two Venoms in the Redback, and, well, the two Redbacks, effectively, with Drone's commander acting as the second Redback. It's still not that great. And, okay, that's probably going to force it back. It should force it back, Anarchid. Why is refraining from assaulting any further? They don't want to have to lose their units like that. That would be a very, very bad thing to do. Now, on the other hand, Anarchid... They gotta have something planned from this point on. I mean, they can't just be spamming ducks and scallops. Sooner or later, they're gonna have to deal with the fact that there's a fairly large air force and bombers within that. The ducks aren't a terrible idea there. But the anglers, there we go. That's what I was waiting for. The anglers are really what they want. That's what they want to do to counter. Anarchid does have the center, but at this point between Drone and Golda, Drone reclaiming from that entire last battle, Drone gets all the reclaim, all that territory. Anarchid, well, Anarchid Assault in the Southwest won't be able to do that too effectively, and does now have to contend with Drone's main force, and Drone's main force forced to retreat as a result. The Southwest should go down fairly quickly, but Raven's coming in to try to help out, as well as the ground spider forces. Southwest will still go down, but will Anarchid's units survive? That is the bigger question. The ducks are all that's left now. The scallops having been destroyed by all the bombers. But the ducks do have range advantage on the Venoms very easily. They have a range of 250 Elmos to 240 Elmos. Okay, oh, it's not easily. It's actually a very, very close thing. But they still have a range advantage. So at least it works in their favor. Not so much a projectile speed advantage, though. And with all those projectiles having been launched out... Drone moving in, but not fast enough. The ducks have reloaded, and those Venoms will be under threat again. And Drone having taken the south... Sorry, the northeast. That is a problem. Orphelia is going for a ground assault proxy Cloakabot factory in the northeast, while Anarchid 
Mountains just continues to assault the Southwest. Drone and Golda have been entirely on the defense of this game. They've done a very good job on the defensive. It's worked out in their favor so far. I mean, Drone having ma managed to get quite a lot of reclaim as a result. Golda just not really losing anything. They've lost a couple of Hawks here and there, but for the most part, they are basically in a really good position right now. The anti-air is up, but it's mostly ground-based anti-air. There is actually the tri okay, there are the tridents. So that will be a more substantial problem. Norphelius trying to take out the northeast. Looks like they have a decent force to do so too. Orphelius's commander moving forward. How is this going to work? Going to work very poorly. Orphelius's commander is about to go down. Orphelius losing their commander to the bombers. That was a blow. I'm sure Orphelius would rather that didn't happen. And the remaining glaives. Doing okay, not dying, but at this point, trying to take out the Northeast is going to be just way too daunting, way too imposing. After losing that commander, Orphelius, they can actually take the Northeast right now if they wanted to. But they're not choosing to do so, they're instead choosing to go towards the main base from the looks of it. Well, over the Southwest once again, Anakid losing ground as Drone moves in. Drone getting the tarantulas, they need to get rid of those gunships. And I think at this point, Drone's going to be able to just punch through this area. They... They're not punching through as directly as they... Well, as they really aren't that confident. They shouldn't be that confident. The Ducks are an imposing threat. They have to be careful. The drone is slowly but surely getting ground, getting reclaim, which is a big deal. That's been giving a huge, mil well, huge military advantage, ultimately. A huge economic advantage, which has translated into a military advantage for drone. And Golda is just... Ripping everything apart with those bombers. Those ravens are completely uncontested. The tridents, I'm surprised, are actually not in the area. Where are those tridents? I I don't see them. They're all apparently dead. And this is why I said Drone needs to be careful, because Drone knows this too. Moving back, trying to get the redbacks out of the way, but those boys... Those boys making... Making Drone pay just a little bit. For having overextended slightly. And we'll burn from Golda because why not? We are at that stage of the game. We might as well. At this point, Golda is basically just... Well, they are ready to finish everything off. Drone, however, not in the best positions, but not in a terrible position either. The crab being set up, this crab is going to probably turn this around once again. Size from Orphelius to get rid of this Northeast expansion. Wasn't strictly necessary, but it did reduce glaive losses, so I will commend that it does help. It was a good idea. Getting rid of that expansion with no losses in the assault. Always a good thing to do. It seems like a lot of people, it's one of those rookie mistakes, and it's something even people do up until 1700, 1800 LO range. Sometimes even 2000 LO range in larger games. Although in larger games when they last longer we have a lot of units it's not as big of a deal but yeah keeping your units alive that's a big deal it's always good if you can keep your units alive do so because that's just one more unit that you don't have to rebuild that helps with just a gradual economic advantage Golda does this all the time with their units that's how they've tended to play clone is really well known for this that is their style in a nutshell is don't lose units although clone hasn't played in a while as far as i can tell they're not in this tournament, unfortunately. That would be kind of cool, but they are not... They must be busy or something. I haven't seen them in a while. But yeah, clone style. Very defensive, very focused on unit preservation. And over in the southeast, that crab is doing quite a number. It's in siege mode, so it's not going to be able to be dislodged that easily. Boys doing their darndest, though. Boys and Stinger. The Stinger haven't gone down. Boys soon to go down as well. But that crab continues to press on, being repaired, and despite the extra damage, it is going down. The boy, I mean. The boy's going down. The anglers, too. This entire defensive line is basically doomed. Anarchid still has the center. They don't have really a whole lot to hold it with. The defenders would help, but at this point, I think there are just too many units on the field. Hermit's coming in to support the crab, and this is probably going to be game. Anarchid with a last-ditch grizzly attempt. Orphilius with a main base attack with the scythe. It won't last long, though. Trying to get away from those ravens. At least, jukes them out by going into cloak mode. We'll be able to cloak again, and yes, it cloaks again in time, but it does get spotted out. Orphelius does not move it. A little unfortunate, but once again, the ravens do not acquire a target before 
Orpheus is able to escape once again, leaving that scythe in their base. The glaives all went down during the assault, but the scythe not so much. The scythe is still in a pretty good position. Can't really damage a whole lot right now, though. But at the same time, Morpheus is taking the northeast, so at least Anakin and Morpheus will be able to get their economies more or less back on track. But with the amount of pressure coming in from Drone, this may not... Actually, Drone and Golda from the looks of it. Primarily Drone, though. Drone's the one in the main base. Golda will be providing air support at some point. It looks like... Well, at this point, a line of fleas preventing that scythe from going in at all. So Orpheus' the scythe has been rendered completely useless. A little unfortunate it's on the outside of this too, it didn't move in slightly further west, that would have been perfect. Would have been so good, and now the fleas moving away, the fleas... ...revealing themselves, trying to spot out that scythe, and the scythe realizing this, able to avoid them, and... Orphelius, however, this is not going to be the problem. That's the thing, Orphelius does not have the best position to make this work. The scythe still can't really do much. Jump bot factory for Golda, switching over to that, because that is a decent ground factory. Always good to have, and the Pyros finishing off the Northeast while Drone completely takes over the Southwest. The Grizzly is up. Last ditch effort. While at the same time, Wolverine's over to the Northeast to try to help get rid of this expansion that Freelius has set up. But I think this Crab is basically what's going to win the game. The Wolverine could be useful in the main base, though, and Golden coming in with the Pyros as well to clear out this Kogabot factory. That'll burn up very nicely. Make very good kindling. Kogabot factory down, and over the southwest to Crab and Fleas coming in as well. That'll just tear everything apart. The Grizzly gonna get swarmed by Fleas. About to go down, and that's pretty much it. Scala coming in to try to help out, but it's not enough. A pair of Crabs at this point. And with that, I think this is going to be game. Yep, there we go. Anakin throwing out the resign, throwing in the white flag, and we are on to game two. Game two's map choice will be up to Anakin and Orphelius. We'll see what they choose when they get to it. Now, at this point, I think... Where is... Oh, yeah, so Google needs a sub. It looks like everyone else from that particular match has been accounted for. So we'll see in a moment, I think... Let's double check here. So we have Snuggle Base is not here either. Sanic is here, I believe. Yeah, I don't see Snuggle Base or, for that matter, Sanic. A little odd that. Yeah, I don't. Okay, I don't know where Snuggle Base is. The Snuggle Base Hokomoko might be getting a free pass here since Google is not here and we can't find a sub. Anyway, the second map is... Yeah, Drone pointing out that in that match, the scallops that were in the center of the map could have just marched down the hill and wiped them out probably. And at that point, there were three lotuses, so it would have been a bit tricky. It would have been easier to wipe out Golda at that point. Wiping out Drone would have been harder. Those three scallops, I think, at best, one would have survived. Although, admittedly, there would have been one would have survived winning the game. But no, it's more like one would have survived getting rid of the Lotuses, and, and then further follow-up forces would have had been used to actually seal the victory. So, not the best of positions. But yeah, Anarchid, a little bit timid once they lost those drops. So we're moving on to Sea of Dunes. What? Seriously? Okay, never mind. Sorry, there, there are two maps that are released recently, Seas of Dews and Sands of Time, which are apparently fairly similar, but Sands of Time is a more reasonable size of 12v12. Sea of Dunes is 20v20, sorry, 20x20, and that's just too big. Way too big. Okay, so apparently Snuggle Base is in fact here. Okamoko is talking to them right now, they're not apparently on the main server. Which is a little bit odd, but they are here, so at the very least, it is not going to be a double elimination on that part. Well, I mean, a double... You know what I mean. Both teams... It's not going to be both teams gone. <laughs> That's what I mean to say. So we're on game two, and that is on Sands of Time. 
And it occurs to me that I should probably be writing this into the stream as well, because the stream should know. All right. So we have that. Stream is updated. All right, good. So the game, the map, is Sea of Dunes, which is exactly what it says in the tin. It is a bunch of dunes. A bunch of plasticine dunes. Okay, I'm being a little facetious, but to be fair, dunes usually have a slightly sharper edge, but at the same time, the spring engine isn't especially great, like most height map-based engines. Sharp edges don't look Great. They can work though. A lot of maps do have them, and looks like this is just meant to be more roll off dunes. I don't know, there's something odd. It looks good from here. It's just something weird about when you zoom in. Anyway, sorry, I probably shouldn't be critiquing the map too much aesthetically. So it's going to be pretty clearly seen. It's a very even map, fairly wide open. It's. Got a decent set of elevation changes. I'm thinking vehicles are not useful. I'd be surprised if they were. It's possible that it's actually flatter than I expect, but it doesn't look that flat. So I don't expect to see anything other than just... Well, like I said, with... With bots, I mean, the fact that it's not vehicle passable, the bots are going to be biggest deal here. Drone going for Colicubot Factory. And Anarchid... Also going for Colicubot Factory, it looks like... What are they planning? So Drone and Anarchy going Cloaky, and it looks like... Golda... Golda and Drone debating whether or not to rush. Anarchid is... Anarchid and Ophelius have not really been discussing on here. I'm guessing they are in a voice chat. They're just working out how the pathing works, because yeah, so in the extreme case, this could be spider-only. It doesn't look spider-only, it does look like bots could path over the dunes. Golda is apparently going to go spider, so we have spider Cloaky versus Cloaky and spider as well. Got spider Cloaky on both sides, so let us begin. The game is starting. Drone Golda coming in with an advantage, coming in with one point. Just need one more. It is best of three at this point in order to win. What's the misclick? Oh, Orphelius. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, Anarchy accidentally clicked in the south. So we are going to be exiting the game and completely ruining the win counter. One sec. So yeah, that was slightly bizarre. Let's just get that back to where it should be. So right now, no, 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 ah, no, I don't want to get in yet. Darn it! I still need to set up that. Sorry, I need to set that thing up with the ability to actually enter the win counter. Like enter the win count. But I haven't had a chance to get around to it. There been a bunch of other bugs that needed fixing. Not to mention, I'm still not quite sure how to use that input tool. There is a chili input thing. But I'm not quite sure how best to use it. Anyway. So, the win counter is right, at least. Sorry, it's slightly confusing as to who won last. Golda and Drone obviously last one, one last time, but yeah, I couldn't quite fix that in time before the game loaded. Uh, I don't know why Exit produces a win. Like, Exit seems to cause... I, I kind of wish that would cause every single player to leave at exactly the same time so no one is considered in the game. Although I might be able to special case that. I'm not sure. If someone could let me know what the Chili... Not the Chili, the Lua call-in specifically for Game Exit or how to check if it's a Game Exit that's been force exited rather than simply one player winning or one team winning. 
that would be really great. That'd be very nice to know. That way I can at least make sure that this doesn't get incremented whenever an exit happens. And whenever some weird error like that happens. So at this point, Orphelius and Golda just vying for control of the south, vying for scouting control of the south, see get as much vision as they can. Double check, do I? Okay, line of sight's off, good. Anarchid, on the other hand, is contending with drone for cloaky bot dominance. But it looks like it looks like Anarchid has pretty much taken it. Anarchid being extremely aggressive. Drone, on the other hand, they're getting up their they are getting up their own glaives, but it looks like for the most part, all glaives belong to Anarchid, and they are moving towards Golda at a frightening pace. A Venom is up, and there are defenders as well, and it looks like Anarchid. They're just scouting around. I don't think they actually know where Drone or Golda is. They're just scouting around, seeing what's going on. From their point of view, they do have some idea. Actually, they have quite a good set of vision. They don't know exactly what Golda's up to, but they kind of probably know where they are just because of seeing their forces coming in, seeing where the forces are coming from. That Venom is going to be a problem, though. They need to make sure that those Glaives are not getting hit by the Venom. And that is not going to be an easy problem to solve. Because Glaives just do not handle Venoms well. Looks like... Looks like Golda is just going to continue for Builders. Orphelia is getting a Venom of their own to try to help out, and Drone with a nice Lotus set of preventing the Glaives from getting in too far. One Metal Extractor goes down, but that's not a big blow. Golda and Drone are ahead economically, and at this stage in the game, Energy's kind of the bigger bottle... Well, yeah, Energy is the bigger bottle like at this stage in the game. And unfortunately... Anarchid's Glaives all clumping up nicely for the Venom, allowing Drone's Glaives to get rid of them, and that is Anarchid's force. Anarchid continuing to rebuild, but I think that Drone's counterattack here is probably not going to be easily handled. Now, Orphelius does have their own Venom, but Anarchid and Orphelius really gambled here. They went, they went wide. And that can work in larger maps if your opponent isn't aggressive. But this isn't that large of a map. It's 10 by 10, yes, but it's kind of encouraging expansion. It's, sorry, it's encouraging aggression. Drone and Golda were wise to be starting up close to each other, while Anarchid and Orphelius, they're going to have a harder time helping each other defend. Though Orphelius does have pretty much all the vision. Like, Drone and Golda actually don't have a whole lot of vision available. They have radar, which on this map is not that useful. It's not useless, but with all the dunes, all the hills, it's, it's harder to make it quite as useful as it would otherwise be. It looks like Drone, though. They are getting body blocked. And, however, not in a way that's actually that meaningful. Drone could, and they are moving in. Will be able to get rid of Anarchid's forces. Anarchid, not in a great position to deal with this. But they should be okay enough, at least for now. And Anarchid's commander getting threatened very slightly. Bigger threat, though, is this one glaive over to the north. That won't be able to get in yet, but it, once that defender gets destroyed, or at least gets its missiles reduced, that's an extra bit of assault force coming in from the back. But Anarchid able to push Drone away. Drone wisely avoiding a direct conflict. Instead going south to deal with Orphelius, and finds the Venoms. Unfortunately, Orphelius not reacting in time to actually attack the glaive force, Allowing them to move in instead and probably get rid of Orphelius' base. Yeah, actually, they probably will. There's a Hermit coming up, but that's about it. Not much else. This is going to be a major threat. Drone coming in with these three Glaives. There's a Hermit, but that's not going to help too much. And these three Glaives moving in. Drone is going for it. Same time, we do have an attack from... Well, very small attack, but this is the attack. This is the real attack. This is the meat and potatoes of, the, of this game. And it does not work. Drone not quite able to get out of there. And I meant to get rid of that scrolling. But drone not, unfortunately, quite able to get out of there. That was quite the blow. I'm sure Drone would have rather have not lost that. Close run thing, too. I, I agree with the attack. I think it could have worked out. Not sure why it didn't. Very close thing. But yeah, three Glaives. I'm pretty sure should be able to get rid of a Lotus. However, Drone has switched over to Rocco's, and that is going to mean these defenders are actually extremely useful right now. Lotuses don't really have the range to continuously attack Rocco's. Rocco's can be microed in and out of a Lotus range to hit it. Defenders, however, do have the range. The Rocco's cannot get in without getting damaged. So now we have a bit more of an even game. Well, getting on that even. 
Drone and Golda still ahead economically by quite a lot, actually. About plus 7 metal each, so plus 14 total. Like, that's another factory's worth of metal between the two of them. So they have... They have a lot going for them right now. However, Gold's Commander is in front here, and that's going to be a... Well, actually, no problem at all, because Gold are the only ones surviving the Venom Wars, and those Hermits do not have enough health. They don't have enough EMP bar open. Anarchid coming in to help support... Big Heroes... Oh, okay, the Big Damn Heroes moment did not quite pan out. The Glaives instead moving north to try to get rid of the Venoms over here, and they are not going to succeed, because they are too clumped up. They also apparently weren't aware of them. I don't know why... Why is Anarchid point moving here? That doesn't make any sense. They should be line moving. Okay, there we go. There's a the line move. Nice flank, too! Very good to see that. Not quite enough, though, but still... Good tactic. And a tick coming out from Drone? Yep, Drone throwing ticks out there. Everything is EMP today. Everything's all about EMP and units. Everything's about disabling the units and then getting in and attacking, because that's... Well, that's Spider matchup for you. Spider and Cloakie matchup is entirely about who can disable... Well, whether the spider bot can disable the Cloakies and whether the Cloakies can just get Rockos up. And there are the Rockos. The Venoms are actually probably still going to be fairly useful. With the Dunes, Spiderbot Factory is going to have a lot of space to work with. Because normally Spiderbot Factory, they're, they're at an advantage with cliffs when it comes to anything that allows them to ambush from behind a hill or a cliff or anything like that. Most maps don't quite work that way. They don't quite have cliffs everywhere, but this one does. And Drones co or Golden's Commander goes down. Goes down to some Hermits. That is one Commander down. And Anakin Norphelius are getting up there economically. They are not going down without a fight, that's for sure. But Drone... Sorry, Gulda not allowing them to get in. Drone actually to the north as well. Hammering on these defenders. Should be able to get rid of that line. Once that line is broken, then Anakin's going to be swarmed by... Well, hammers at this point. Drone's building about a dozen of those. Wow, just... Building... Okay, now switching to Warriors. And another commander down for... Orphelius this time, losing their commander as well, which is a bigger blow than it was against Golda. Whenever, whoever's the weaker economy is going to take a lot more damage from a commander, and Drone coming in here to try to get rid of these glaives, which, why should I say try? Successfully getting rid of all of one, of, all but one of the glaives going down, and power being knocked down as well, but there's more than enough power. Drone does not have to worry about that. Metal is now the bigger concern, and power not so much. Although, admittedly, Metal Extractors aren't a big concern. Drone has been reclaiming pretty well. And now the Defender Line has been broken. Drone is coming in with those hammers, reclaiming as they go. Because that is how you play this game. Drone... I'm sorry. Golda as well. They have their Weaver up. They are not yet reclaiming as much. Still, Golda and Drone have the economic advantage, and they should, I mean, as you can see very clearly, a territory advantage as well. They should be able to take this no problem. Attack over to the north with some Lotus... Well... Sneaky Lotus over to the north, while Scythe coming in as well to try to help out, and to the south. Golda taking this particular dune. Taking it, should be able to hold it decently well, and... Drone... Well, losing their commander, unfortunately for them. That's actually a pretty unfortunate thing. They were getting a lot of economy. Their recon was a big deal. Sorry, recon. Their, their econ. The reclaim to their econ was a big deal. That's what I meant to say. Mer merge the words in my head, but yes, what I meant was the reclaim was a big deal for their economy, and losing that commander is going to be a problem. Probably not a game losing problem, but still a problem. At this point, Anakin and Orphelius are. Well, Orphelius is trying to get back in. The Hermits. This would be a really good flank if it weren't for the fact that the Dune does stop a lot of the shots from getting in that would otherwise be able to hit drones. Or sorry, hit Golda's forces. They're getting blocked off by that dune, but I think at this point, the Hermits should be able to finish them off. And Golda in a slightly worse position than Orphelius. Orphelius flanking decently well. Golda losing these forces, being forced to retreat somewhat. But at the same time, Drone coming into the massive assault force of warriors over to the north. Hitting with rockers in the center, and other than that, it's pretty much... Well, I think Anarchid and... Orphelius will be able to take this dune back, but I still think that Golden and Drone have the advantage by far. I think once Drone comes in with these warriors, it's going to be a big deal. Those warriors are going to come in, and they're probably going to rip apart everything. 
A little surprising they aren't attacking yet, though. The Rockos are in place. That's going to be a problem. And drone coming in with a gunship factory. Oops. Huh. This was fixed. Anyway, drone coming in with a gunship factory. And we'll be able to just finish that off. Yep. So the gunship factory will help, but at the same time, Golda losing ground, losing the position over here in the south, while Drone, on the other hand, is not quite taking position yet. Actually, they're moving back with these things. A little surprising there. I don't know why they're... Why did they move those warriors up? I'm curious. I think they might have forgotten about them. A like, kind of out-of-practice problem? Because Drone mentioned they were feeling rusty and out-of-practice. They haven't been playing a whole lot recently. I'm not sure why. They mentioned they weren't really liking the game at the moment. I'm not sure if that's just... You know, they're not in the mood, or if there's some change that's pissed them off. I have no idea. They didn't elaborate when I was there. But at any rate, Drone's still doing decently well, If even if they have lost some practice time. And at this point, though, the south side is getting tough to get in. Anarchy and Orphelius are doubling down on the southern... Southern base. While well, the northern base, Anarchid able to defend decently well, but Warriors are getting in. Hammers able to stop it for now, but at the same time, a lot of hammers from Drone that should be slowly but surely creeping in, getting rid of Anarchid's base. Orphelius, on the other hand, doing pretty well, actually. Golda's army cannot quite compete in terms of size, especially not in terms of position. Orphelius able to just flank Golda very effectively. Getting rid of all of Golda's forces, and the only problem is... Golda has a slightly stronger economy. As well as Venoms! More importantly, Venoms! This is a big deal. Here are the Venoms, and the Venoms are going to be a problem. As those... Those Hermits cannot last. Those Venoms there, and the Rapiers as well from Drone to finish this off, and the South Side will probably break fairly soon. The North Side, however, a counterattack from Anarchid, and a very powerful counterattack at that. Glaives coming in to deal with Glaives. Rock is coming in to deal with everything else. The Defender line being the only problem right now, but there are probably enough hammers to deal with that as well. But now the South Side having gone down at the same time, thanks to the Venoms. Everyone's trying to help out, coming in to help, but not enough. Those Hermits will have a very hard time dealing with this, and it looks like Drone and Golda, despite losing a bit of ground right in the north, it appears that they are going to be able to push in and going to be able to win this match. Now for Reclaim coming from Golda, sorry, from Drone. Not just from Golda, but definitely from Drone. Anarchid has a bit of their own. They are reclaiming here and there, but they still don't have the economy advantage, and Drone and Golda, they're about to take it. Pushing in, this will be the last push from Drone, Drone and Golda. If the Hermits cresting the hill, we have the Glaives coming on the side. Anarchid's commander moving forward for one last ditch defense, but the Hammers will probably finish it off, and at the same time, the South, I mean, Orphelius, they're actually completely open right now. Nothing's, nothing's attacking them too hard, but it doesn't really matter. If Anarchid goes down, I think they're going to throw in the towel, and then that will be game and match. Anarchid and Orphelius will go to the loser's bracket, and Drone and Golda will advance. Anarchid's commander getting hit and about to go down. Anarchid losing their commander, and I... Are they going to GG right now, or what? No, they are staying in. They're being tenacious. I support this in a tournament. I've mentioned it before. Tenacity in a tournament is something to... Something to be expected, really. Players should be tenacious, but this... Yeah... Anakin realizing there's not much they can do, reasonably resigning, and that is going to be game and match. That's going to be game two. So we are moving on to the next round. Nicely done. So, Golda and... Golda and Drone. Ah, sorry about that. Golda and Drone moving on to the winter semifinals. So that is going to be... That's going to be against... So we have some of the matches done now. Oh, right. Snuggaways, Hokomoko, Google, and Sanic. No sub found for them, so that's not going to be... It's not going to be there. And it looks like... Killer and Ralhop will be going against... Sorry. 
Anakin Ophelia is going to be going against Snuggle Base and Hoko Moko. That is going to be the next match. Google Frog and Akonim versus Yogg-Sadoth and Skazi, probably. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. So we are going to be seeing... So, loser's bracket will be Kildan Ralhoff versus Lufold, or Lulhoft, Lulhoft, and Ikins, while Anakin Ophelia is fighting against... Go well, Anakin Ophelia is moving on for free to loser's round two. I guess the second loser's semifinals. Yeah, let's go with that. So they're moving on to loser's semifinals too, while winner semifinals is Snuggle Base Tonkamoko versus Golden Drone and Yogg Sazen Skazi versus Google Frog and Aquanim. So let's continue to follow Golden and Drone. Seems like a thing to follow. <laughs> 